In this video, we will show you how to install a front knuckle on your Subaru Impreza. It's located behind the front wheel. Let's get started. As a disclaimer for this job, you will need an alignment after you are done. Using a 19 millimeter socket, I'm going to remove the five lug nuts. Remove the two 17 millimeter bracket bolts using a 17 millimeter socket or wrench. Remove your caliper bracket assembly and hang it up out of the way so there is no pressure hanging on this hose. Remove the rotor and put it off to the side. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the ABS sensor bolt. Then I'm gonna use a pair of pliers to grab around the sensor. You want to be very careful because these sensors are plastic and they're very easy to break in the knuckle. We're going to gently wiggle it back and forth until it starts moving. And then pull up and out. We're going to remove the cotter pin and then the castle nut on the outer tie rod. Bend the cotter pin up and back. This is super rusted in and it doesn't look like it's going to be coming out. So I'm going to chop it flush on the side of the nut. I was not able to get the cotter pin out. So what I'm going to do is put a 19 millimeter socket on the castle nut. Hammer it on and then using an impact, we're going to spin off the nut. Using a punch, I'm going to get the cotter pin out of the hole in the stud. If you don't have a punch, you can use a drill bit and drill through. Just try and drill straight through the hole. Once it's out far enough, you can use a pair of pliers and just pull it out the rest of the way. I'm going to thread the castle nut back onto the top of the stud. And to remove this out of the knuckle, we're going to hit this area with a hammer. Take off your castle nut and drop this to the side. To not have the knuckle flop back and forth on you, reinstall the tie rod end and just put the castle nut on for a few threads. We're going to remove this 14 millimeter pinch bolt. You have to be very careful to not break this. If you end up snapping it, you will have to drill it through. I'm going to put some penetrant on it right now and let it sit before I even start trying to remove the bolt. Using a 32 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the axle nut. We're going to remove the cotter pin off the lower ball joint. Using a 19 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the castle nut off the lower ball joint. Using a big hammer, you're going to want to hit this part on either side 
to break the seal of the ball joint on the lower control arm. Using a pry bar, we're going to pry down on the lower control arm and take the ball joint out of the socket. I am going to be using a hook to hook onto the lower control arm. This is not needed, but it is a great help. We're going to push the axle spindle through the hub and pull, and you can pull the knuckle up out of the way, and we're going to tie this axle up to the side. It's time to go back and try and get this out, but before we do, if you try right now, and put a bunch of torque on it, the knuckle's gonna wanna move on you. So what we're going to do is put this ball joint back in and just thread the nut back on. It will come out much easier after it's been removed once. Thread on the nut, just in case. And then let's start attacking this bolt. I used a bunch of heat and penetrating fluid on this bolt, starting it back and forward until it really breaks free. Once it starts to break free, go ahead and remove the bolt. Using a 14 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the four wheel bearing bolts. Remove the castle nut on the lower ball joint. We're going to pull this back down and remove the ball joint out of the control arm. Using a ball joint removal tool, we are going to remove the ball joint out of the knuckle. If you do not have a tool, you can use a punch and punch in between these two ears and open it up and try to pull it out that way. With your tool set up, go ahead and remove the ball joint. If you're having problems with the knuckle sliding back and forth on you, you can install your axle again to help it not move so much on you. I'm just gonna put the axle nut on just a few threads. That's your ball joint. Remove your hand tight axle nut and take the axle back out. You can tie it right back up where it was. Remove the castle nut and pull the tie rod end down. You're going to want to make a mark on your top camber bolt and we're going to want to install that back on the mark. This will get you close to the alignment that your car is currently at. 
Using a 19 millimeter wrench to hold the head of the bolt and a 19 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the strut knuckle bolt. And do the same thing on the bottom. Be sure to have a hand on the knuckle because it will fall if you do not. And there is a washer on the back of the top bolt. Once your bolts are out, remove your knuckle. And then let's head over to the press and press our wheel bearing out. Set the knuckle up on the press the best you can and press out your wheel bearing. Once your wheel bearing is pressed out, take the knuckle off before installing the new knuckle. It's a good idea to go through and clean up all of the hardware that came off the car. Install your new knuckle. We're going to put the strut bolts in first. Make sure that the camber bolt is in the top hole. Install the second one. The washer goes on the top camber bolt. and just hand thread these nuts on for now. Go ahead and install the tie rod end and put the castle nut hand tight for now. We'll torque that down later. If you're reusing your old ball joint, it's a good idea to clean this groove. It's a good idea to put a little bit of copper around here. Makes it so if you're doing the job in the future, it should come out easier than the first time you did it. Install that in the knuckle. If you're reusing your old wheel bearing, clean up around the inside of here before installing it into your new knuckle. It's also a good idea to put some copper around the side. Since these are not pressed in, this will not affect the tightness because they are bolted in. Install your four wheel bearing bolts. If you're having trouble lining up the bolts, you can take the hub off, push the bolts through, and then push the hub onto them. Snug down your four wheel bearing bolts. You want to tighten them down in a cross pattern to make sure the wheel bearing seats square. And then we're going to torque these to 53 foot-pounds. We're going to torque our ball joint pinch bolt to 37 foot-pounds. Take the axle down, pull the knuckle out, 
line the splines up with the hub, push it back in. Then we're gonna use a pry bar, pull down on our lower control arm and reinstall our bottom ball joint. Go ahead and thread a nut onto the bottom of the ball joint. I'm going to snug up the nut on the ball joint. Torque the bottom ball joint nut to 30 foot pounds. And then you can go up to an additional 60 degrees until a slot in the castle nut lines up with the hole in the stud. Install a new cotter pin and bend it around the nut. Install your ABS sensor. You can fit a torque wrench in here, torque the ABS bolt down to five and a half foot pounds. If not, do the best you can. Snug down the outer tie rod nut. Torque the outer tie rod nut to 20 foot pounds. and then up to an additional 60 degrees until the slot in the castle nut lines up with the hole in the stud. Install your new cotter pin and bend it up over the nut. Trim off any extra that is hanging over the knuckle. Install the axle nut. Snug down the axle nut. Using a pry bar in between the studs, I'm going to hold the hub while torquing the axle nut. We're going to torque it to 140 foot pounds. Using a punch and a hammer, we're going to stake the axle nut so the axle nut cannot back off. When tightening down the top camber bolt where we made our mark, Make sure that the marks are lined up and that's where you're gonna hold the head of the bolt as we tighten and torque it. Tighten down the top camber bolt. Tighten down the bottom bolt. Holding the head of the camber bolt, we are going to torque it to 116 foot-pounds. and make sure the marks are still lined up. Do the same thing to the bottom. Install the brake rotor. I'm going to put one lug nut hand tight on just to hold the brake rotor on so it doesn't fall off while we're putting the caliper on. Take the caliper down and install it on the brake rotor. And put your two 17 mils back in. Snug up your caliper bolt. Torque your caliper bracket bolts to 59 foot pounds. Now that the caliper is installed, we can take off our lug nut holding on the rotor and reinstall the wheel. I'm going to put the wheel back on. 
and install my five lug nuts, finger tight, and then tighten them down. making sure to tighten them down in a star pattern. Now that our car is on the ground, we're gonna tighten our lug nuts in a star pattern to 100 foot-pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.